The psalmist says in Psalm 118, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. We also heard that Jesus asks, Ask Mary outside the empty tomb, Woman, why are you weeping? She mistook him for the gardener, but she was not so wrong because he, he was the one whom Paul would call a new Adam. Indeed, it was a moment of new creation. He calls her by name like the good shepherd who knows his own. She calls him Rabunai, and the resurrection faith is born in her. She is sent to tell others, I have seen the Lord. As Luke tells the story of the resurrection of our Lord, he says that the women went into the empty tomb. Suddenly in their midst there were two men in dazzling claws that stood by them. The small, dark space of the empty tomb is filled with angelic light. Heaven had opened before them. The angel said, why do you, why do you look, so, look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is, he is risen. And today, John tells us that Jesus stood among the disciples, opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead and on the third day, rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness to be, is to be proclaimed to all the world, to all nations. And the disciples suddenly believed Jesus lives. He lives. We often act as if the words uh, meant nothing. We act as if, if Jesus really wasn't present, as if he really isn't present among us. And we, re we need to remind ourselves that, that Christ lives every day. These words hold in him, in them, a, a wonderful and powerful reality. It really is so. Jesus lives. Christ dwells, dwells among us with his power and his spirit. And, and because he lives, we also live. Jesus wants us to know that, to experience it, to live in our lives, to live it in our lives, and, and having lived it, to tell it to the world. Jesus sends us even as he was sent into the world. Yes, Jesus lives. Do we really believe it? If you believe it, then why don't you live it? Sometimes we act as if we didn't believe it. Witness the crowds when they were in church on, on Easter. Where were the crowds the next Sunday? The spirit of doubt, the spirit of doubt takes hold of our, our lives just a mere week later. As we sit here in church, we may wonder what Easter really has to do with us. I'd like to tell you a story. I'd like to tell you about my sister. It was in the fall of 1969, that's quite a few years ago, but it was in the fall of 1969 when Peter, her 10-year-old son, was out duck hunting with his father and, and his three brothers here in Colorado. 
that he died of heart condition. Ten years old. Oh, there's a lot to tell about that story, too. It was two years after that, on December 9th, on his mother's birthday, when Billy, her 16-year-old son, came running home from school following basketball practice, came in the front door of the house and dropped dead on the living room floor from a heart attack. It was, it was about two years after that when another son, Steve, who was then about 16, was involved in a car accident where the girl he was with was killed along with the driver of the other car. And he was in the hospital in a critical condition for, critical condition for some time with the doctors saying that he probably would not survive. But he did pull through. Then it was five years later, in 1978, that her husband, Bill, died of a heart condition at the age of 46. It was about a, a year about a year following her husband's death that I received a letter from my sister that I will never forget. It was the day before Easter when I received it. After writing about her husband's death and the boy's deaths, she concluded the letter with a comment. Thank God for Easter. For her, the doubts and sorrows connected with the deaths of her, the death of two of her boys and her husband were tempered, were tempered with the joy of Easter. She knows that Jesus is alive. She knows that there is a resurrection, that Jesus rose from the dead, and she knew that her boys and her husband and she will share in the resurrection. Everything's going to be all right. And that's joy. I told my story in a sermon the following week back in Ashby, Minnesota. And I didn't realize the effect this story would have on at least one member of the congregation. So the story continues. I served on two volunteer fire department and ambulance services for some 18 years. It was during Lent the following year that an incident occurred. A telephone call came that an ambulance was needed at one of the gas stations in town. Emmett had suffered a, a heart attack and needed to be taken to the hospital immediately. So I ran to the ambulance and we picked him up and headed to the hospital where his doctor was located. About, it was about 30, year, 30 miles away by way of the inter, interstate. We weren't two or three miles out of town when Emmett, Emmett went into cardiac arrest. Of course, we started CPR immediately and we changed our destination to the closest hospital, closest hospital which was about 11 miles away. I notified the police in town who let Emmett's wife know where we were headed. It was a small hospital. When I say small, I mean small. Very small. It had only about 15 beds or so with one doctor and two nurses on call. And, and we as an ambulance crew remained in the emergency room to assist in the emergency treatment. Emmett did not survive. 
He died in the emergency room. By that time, Emmett's wife and daughter had arrived and were in the waiting room. And I went with the doctor and nurse as they went and told Anne, his wife Anne and his daughter Anne, that Emmett had died. Emmett's wife Anne immediately responded upon being told that he had died. She responded with, Thank God for Easter, like your sister said. Anne's response was the same as my sister's. The loss of, of the, the loss felt in Emmett's death was tempered by Christ's resurrection. That's the thing that came in upon those early Christians. Jesus is alive. No matter what was happening in the world outside, Jesus is alive. It's going to be all right. And we need, we need to know that. And we need to know it right now. And I don't want you to leave church this morning without knowing it. The Lord knows that we're in need of of knowing that he's alive. And that's why he speaks to us through our senses, through our eyes, through our ears, through our taste, through our sense of touch. I want you to do something right now. Turn to someone next to you or behind you or in front of you and look at them and repeat, Jesus lives. Take a look at each other and say this. Jesus lives. How about, he really lives. Say it now. He really lives. It's it's true. That's how he says it to us through one another. He's going to say it again whenever there's, there's a baptism. He's going to say it again whenever we come to the altar to receive Holy Communion. He's going to touch you with the taste of wine, with the taste of bread in your mouth. He's going to say to you, I'm alive. Your sins are forgiven. It's true. I'm among you. Do we believe because we've seen Jesus? Of course we don't. We don't believe in Jesus because we see him. We believe because he comes to us with his spirit through his word that reaches through our senses. He causes us to live. And because he causes us to live now, he says, go and share my life. Tell them that I am alive. We believe in the resurrection. We believe in Easter. Thank God for Easter. We believe in the risen Christ. And thank God for the risen Christ. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! And we want to serve Him. There, There are all kinds of ways to serve Him. Each one of us Each one of us has a ministry. Today we remind ourselves once again that that Christ sends us into the world to be in ministry and on mission for him. All of us, 
All of us are sent. And all of us are messengers of the risen Christ to tell the world that he lives. Let Christ dwell in your life. Take Christ into yourself. Commit your life to Christ once again and Christ will use you. Christ will send you even as he was sent. And you will experience peace. You will experience the peace of God that passes all understanding. <coughs> which shall keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen.